This is Michael Popak with the Trump on Trial update. Even when there's no trial day and it's dark, we've got news in the trial, and I'm going to bring it to you now. Donald Trump has lost again in his efforts to try to obtain from Stormy Daniels information about her documentary, about her discussions with Michael Cohen, and about her discussions with NBC News. Because Donald Trump is off on a wild goose chase just trying to uh, antagonize, harass, and intimidate Stormy Daniels, and none of the information sought by this late attempted subpoena a year after he was arraigned or indicted, according to Judge Mershon, has anything to do with relevant information about whether Donald Trump is guilty or innocent. They want to go on a general fishing expedition, try to antagonize and intimidate Stormy Daniels, uh, Stephanie Clifford, who was, again, Uh, one of the targets of the three catch and kill uh, operations that were done by Donald Trump, Michael Cohen, and David Pecker, who's still on the stand for the National Enquirer as part of the Trump Tower conspiracy, as labeled that and laid out by the Manhattan prosecutors. So no, the short take here on the hot take is Donald Trump is not going to be able to uh, have Stormy Daniels be required to produce late documents to him so he can go on a general fishing expedition and try to discredit her in some way, shape, or form, having nothing to do with the probative value of the information towards his guilt or innocence. So we've got a new order, and I'm going to read read from it on this particular hot take like we do. It's a decision and order. Again, in New York, that's how judges rule. A D and O. It starts with the fact that almost a month into the, uh, a year into the case, uh, Trump finally got around to issuing a, what we call a, a subpoena ducis tecum. It's also seeking documents and information, just a fancy Latin word for that, against Stephanie Clifford, a.k.a. Stormy Daniels, seeking all materials related to the documentary film titled Stormy that's been on, I think it's on Netflix or Hulu. Uh, the subpoena sought information about uh, relating to her communications with Michael Cohen or his representatives, about Kara McDougal, about a long list of other people, including women who were uh, witnesses against Donald Trump in the E. Jean Carroll case for rape uh, and defamation, including, uh, let me just get the witnesses right, Natasha Stoinoff, who was a reporter for People magazine who testified to the jury in E. Jean Carroll that Donald Trump sexually assaulted her while Melania was in another room while she was trying to do a puff piece for People magazine, and Jessica Leeds, who had the misfortune back in the 90s of being upgraded to first class and having sit next to Donald Trump, who tried to grope her. And so the, the judge has already ruled in Donald Trump's favor that the actual sex attack on E. Jean Carroll, and by extension, these other women, would not be coming into evidence before this jury. But yet, the subpoena asked for all information about contacts between Stormy Daniels and these other women or their representatives. So the judge denied uh, the uh, motion to compel by uh, the uh, Trump and granted the people's motion to quash the subpoenas. The judge went on to say, Uh, to to lay out on page two that the standard that he has to use as a trial judge in exercising his discretion is when deciding a motion to quash access must be afforded to data relevant and material to the determination of guilt or innocence as for example when a request for access is directed toward revealing specific biases prejudices or ulterior motives of the witness as they may relate directly to issues or personalities in the case at hand or when it involves other information which, if known to the trier of fact, the jury, could very well affect the outcome of the trial. But he found that none of the information being sought by Donald Trump against Stormy Daniels falls into that category. So if you go to uh, page three of his order, he uh, he then goes carefully through each of the categories, and he says, well, let's start on page three with all... Donald Trump wants all documents that relate to Stormy Daniels' documentary. And then uh, that already mirrors a subpoena that the judge quashed against NBC, the television network, on this very same grounds. 
In particular, the judge says the defendant Trump seeks all documents that relates to the documentary, the release of the documentary, the editing of the documentary, the promotion of the documentary, the marketing of the documentary, uh, agreements between Stephanie Clifford and NBC Universal, the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg. I mean, the list goes on. Lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach. It's a device that measures your metabolism through your breath. And on the app, it lets you know if you're burning fat or carbs and gives you tailored guidance to improve your nutrition, workout, sleep, and even stress management. All you have to do is breathe into your Lumen first thing in the morning and you'll know what's going on with your metabolism, whether you're burning mostly fats or carbs. Then Lumen gives you a personalized nutrition plan for that day based on your measurements. And you can also breathe into it before and after workouts and meals. So you know exactly what's going on in your body in real time. And Lumen will give you tips to keep you on top of your health game. Your metabolism is your body's engine. It's how your body turns the food you eat into fuel that keeps you going. Because your metabolism is at the center of everything your body does, optimal metabolic health translates to a bunch of benefits, including easier weight management improved energy levels, better fitness results, better sleep, etc. Lumen gives you recommendations to improve your metabolic health. It can also track your cycle and for women, the onset of menopause and adjust your recommendations to keep your metabolism healthy through hormonal shifts so you can keep up your energy and stave off cravings. The key to metabolic health is something called metabolic flexibility. And that's where Lumen really shines. It refers to your body's ability to efficiently switch between using different fuel sources like carbs and fats. There are preferred times to use each. And how well you can switch places you on the metabolic flexibility spectrum. And after getting to know you through your breath, Lumen gives you a metabolic flex score that you can track and improve upon. So if you want to take the next step in improving your health, Go to lumen.me and use Legal AF to get $100 off your Lumen. That's L-U-M-E-N dot M-E and use Legal AF at checkout for $100 off. Thank you, Lumen, for sponsoring this episode. And at the end, the judge says, point blank, this request is overbroad and seeks general discovery. The second request seeks all documents related to communications with uh, with Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen, Karen McDougal, uh, uh, Jean Carroll, E. Jean Carroll, Jessica Leeds, who I just described, and Natasha Stoinoff, who I just described. Again, this request, according to the judge, is overbroad, seeks general discovery, and is not limited to the subject matter of the case. As And, and similarly, asking for all documents relating to communications with the U.S. Attorney's Office about the subpoena is also overbroad and so deny Donald Trump. He's going to have to cross-examine Stormy Daniels or his lawyer as well the best way that he can. And he's not going to be able to like go traipsing around and looking at all of her documentary information or her correspondence with Michael Cohen. Now look, if they had made a narrower request, one that was definitely surgically connected in some way to the uh, credibility of the witness of Stormy Daniels or a probative issue in the case about guilt or innocence, then the judge would have granted it. But he's totally right. This is not the time nor the place nor allowed in criminal discovery to go traipsing around and looking in people's filing cabinets and in their confidential messages just because you feel like it and you, and you want to scratch some sort of itch. So uh, denied. Uh, you know, we're going to see now based on the pace, the velocity at which this trial is moving, which is very quick. I don't think it gets to six or eight weeks. This, this could be a four-week trial at the rate it's going. I mean, things that I thought would take hours have taken a minutes. Opening statements, for instance. Things I, th I thought were going to take a few more days, like jury selection, got done much quicker. And we're moving through this testimony. I mean, they haven't started cross-examining David Pecker yet for the National Enquirer, but they will. You know, he'll be on for four hours or so with the with the prosecutors. They'll be on for two or three hours with Donald Trump's lawyers. Then they'll move on to the next witness. I think Michael Cohen is somewhere sandwiched in the middle. I think Stormy Daniels is not going to be coming up next. They're, the prosecutors are not done laying the groundwork for the future witnesses like Cohen and Stormy Daniels and some of the baggage they bring into the courtroom with them. 
They're going to put other unassailable witnesses that establish and corroborate and bolster the testimony of people like Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen before they even take the stand. They'll use people from inside the Trump organization, not Alan Weisselberg, who's spending time on Rikers Island for a perjury charge, who used to be the chief financial officer. and other, But there's other people in the Trump organization who can testify about the books and records, the checks paid to Michael Cohen in reimbursement for Stormy Daniels before we even get to Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels. But the good news here is the judge did the right thing, and he denied the subpoena last minute to try to go after Stormy Daniels. And now she'll take the stand. I'm still working, by the way, behind the scenes on an interview that I'd like to do of Stormy Daniels. One of her representatives reached out to me. I think it's going to happen after the trial or after her testimony, at least. But we'll keep you posted. And we'll do it right here on the Midas Touch Network and on Legal AF and on the Midas Touch Legal AF podcast. Join us on Wednesday and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Find out why we call it Legal AF. You'll know when you join. And then you'll... And there we also curate the best stories at the intersection of law and politics, uh, four or five stories at a time, civil rights, women's rights, abortion rights, constitutional rights, uh, voting rights, uh, everything Donald Trump, everything United States Supreme Court that matters. We bring it to you in analysis right here. Join the Midas Touch Network free, free subscribe. And then you can catch us on YouTube and on audio podcast platforms. And if you like what I'm doing, leave me a, uh, con- a comment or a thumbs up. It helps. keeps the ratings high for the show and the content. It keeps it coming to you. If you like what I'm doing, YouTube, Midas Touch, look under playlists or contributors. You'll find Michael Popak. My entire body of work is there. So until my next hot take, until my next legal AF, until my next Patreon exclusive content, you'll hear more about that next. This is Michael Popak. <laughs>